Wanai Token Sunday in Nyahuru. And, and by the way, I meant it. That um, I, I like the young people moving forward. You know, for a long time, we didn't have young people in the, in the, in the public space, in the political space. You know, so I was very happy that you guys stepped forward uh, to make your ideas known. And I like the fact that you were peaceful. And I like the fact that you were tribeless. And I said it. And I said I love to engage uh, these uh, young people who many of you qualify to be my sons and daughters. So, and um, I made a proposal that uh, we're going to have a multi-sectoral youth-led um, uh, group so that we pick people from different spaces, civil society, wherever. Now, uh, you guys seem to have a different idea. And I don't, I don't mind, that is uh, the beauty of, uh, but you know, I needed to make you know, a proposal. And then you interrogate it, you turn it upside down, you reject it, or uh, just the same way you rejected the finance bill, and then we agree how to, how to go forward. So, um, uh, I am getting feedback from the proposal I made, and the strongest feedback that I'm getting is that maybe we should do it, we should do this uh, differently, yeah? And, uh, and I'm open, you know, if, if, if you want us to do it differently, if you think I should uh, get one of you to host, you know, a, a session with the, with the young people, Mimi Niko Tayari. I think the, 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 there isn't, uh, I think there is a communication problem, which I have admitted. There is a real communication problem between what I am doing, what we agreed, what I am doing, and what you people uh, are, are seeing, you know? I, I was very categorical, and I mean it, by the way, because it is something that I believe we must solve. Youth unemployment, many young people, in different spaces, out of school, out of college, you know, including my own children, you know, they, they, they speak to me. And they have no opportunities to work, to monetize their talent, to do whatever it is that they want to do. And by the way, I have gone out of my way. I have called the leadership of uh, TikTok. They were here. I am the one who persuaded TikTok to get Kenya to monetize the contents of TikTok. True or not true? That's, that's the case. Because I believe there are young people who are in other spaces, who are not traditional employment spaces, but are interested in monetizing their talent. I have been deliberate about what are we doing to get young people elected? I, I was pleasantly surprised that uh, even the media personalities that were interviewing me agree that housing is actually giving young people jobs, which is the truth. That our digital platform, uh, which, we are, which we are now building, we have close to 100,000 young people today who are monetizing their digital talents. No, they are digital uh, working spaces in Tibet, in many other areas. And my plan was to expand that to every place in rural areas. I also, uh, we agreed on how do we create more opportunities for young people to work through manufacturing, through industrialization, in the spaces of export of labor. We're just finishing, uh, we've just finished actually, an agreement with uh, Germany on how we are going to get more young people to be employed in Germany. Uh, they need 250,000 people every year to work in their country. So these are the things that resonated with the young people during the campaign. They are the things 
that I am doing and I can demonstrate with numbers what I am doing in that space to get more young people on board. Whether it is in uh, the housing plan, which I spoke robustly about, it is in my manifesto, whether it is uh, the export of labor, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is, you will all find it in my speeches across Kenya. And I am faithful in addressing them. There is a disconnect, which I must admit. There is a disconnect between what I am doing and what the young people feel. And that is why I want us to have this engagement. I want to listen to them. I want them to tell me, Mr. President, you are doing housing, but you're not doing it properly. Change here, adjust here. You are doing export of labor. You're not doing it properly. You have helped us with TikTok. We are not yet there. You, uh, so, so that I, I need to understand. Because in my very honest opinion, I thought I was implementing the plan that we had together. Let me also tell you that, you know, I am trying to deal with a problem that is 50 years old. You know, there has never been, uh, guys, a deliberate government program on how to create jobs, deliberately. You know, we've, we kept on saying we will grow the economy, then the economy will create jobs. This time around, I said, let's put an investment in housing because I know how many jobs, and I can count how many people are working. Let us put money in the digital space. Let's put money here. That's what I'm doing, deliberately. This time around, differently from what has happened in the past. But you see, it's just a year and a half, you know? I, I, I cannot solve a four and a half million young people unemployment problem in one and a half years. Maybe I will do 100,000 this year. I'm trying to scale it up to 300,000, push it, you know, and, and, and see how we can, how we can do this. The question he asked, and I feel as if it's a question that from where you were, you were listening to what you were saying, mm. you did actually say there's a problem with communication. And yes. In the, in, the next, in, the next, in the next one week, we must have this conversation. Where? In the, the space where you want. So if, are, you telling, are you telling the youths right now, I am, tell you where they want you to speak to Yes, I am, I am sending you guys, go se, uh, tell me who amongst you is going to set up, you know? The, so if you set it up by the end of this week, say Tuesday, yeah. you, will you be there? Yeah. yeah. Say end, end, end of this week, maybe yes. Thursday, Friday? Yes. M why not? I'll be there. The, the biggest question here is that uh, this post is in the right. Mm -hmm. uh, we are leaders. <laughs> there is no political at the face of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, just, I'm just asking that how do you plan to deal with it? Because we've seen some people uh, coming out that they are the leaders, but they have been labeled as a post. So I think uh, really of uh, identity. You know, you're, you're the one who is telling me you are leaderless. It's not me. I'm, I'm not the one saying. I have, uh, it, is not, it is not in my place to identify the leaders for you guys. You guys should sit down, either identify your leaders, who will then engage with me, or if you do not want to identify your leaders, tell me how else you want us to talk. You know, I, I am I am open. When I when I suggested the multi-sectoral thing, and uh, the multi-sectoral setup, I thought you were going to say, okay, we're going to organize ourselves. This is how we are going to participate. And by the way, the whole of that setup, I want it to be about young people, civil society, young people from civil society, uh, religious organizations. Let us get young people from religious organizations, um, professional bodies. Let's get leaders from uh, professional bodies who are young people, you know? Uh, I, am, I am not saying that uh, religious leaders must be the, the traditional religious leaders. We have very many young people in churches. They should be able to step forward and come and uh, engage with me on how to take this forward. If you guys are saying you do not want the traditional way things have been done, you want it 
to be youth led. You want it to be youth owned. You want it to be, I am open. If you, I, I put out a suggestion, you guys tell me, and you know, then it becomes very, very difficult if I don't know who to deal with, you know? At least you know I'm here. But I don't know who now, is it uh, Ms. Kidinji here? Is it Wanjuguna uh, here or who? Who do I deal with? So this is. So whether it is uh, Thursday, Friday, Muki, Muki Pangana, Mimi Niko. Yes. You know, um, people are entitled to say whatever they want to say, you know. Uh, this was about the finance bill, you know. And uh, we are a democracy, you know. We are, we are, not, we are, not, uh, we are not a mob. We are, a, we are a, a, a people, you know. We are a democracy. There is how to engage. There is how, if you want to remove the president of Kenya, from office, there is how you do it, you know. Either you wait for an election, or you do whatever the constitution uh, provides for. And and I have no no issue with anybody doing whatever it is that uh, they want uh, they want to do. But ultimately, we must solve the problem. The problem cannot be a person. Debt is not a person. Unemployment is not a person. All the challenges we have as a country cannot be sorted out. Let us not be simplistic to say, if you remove this person, the problems will end. I don't think that is where we want to go. We want to be honest with ourselves. How do we solve the problem? Let us not run away from the problems we have as a nation by rounding it up and saying, if we lynched this man, and uh, got rid of him, all our problems will end. They will not. You know, we have seen countries that have done that. The countries have never become the same. So I think, I think we just need to be rational. We need to be, you know, to step back and say, okay, how do we solve the problems that affect our country? Mm. Maybe you should tell me, because you are among the young people. Maybe you should tell me, so what was this, what was this about? In uh, matters like, uh, you know, I have a whole uh, program about how I intend to deal with the challenges that affect young people. Let's put that aside. And uh, nobody seems to have a quarrel with that. What the issues are is uh, matters to do with governance, you know, rule of law issues. Uh, are we living within our, 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 our means? That, that's the question. Are we living large? Are we spending more than uh, we, we should be spending? Do we need the office? Uh, do we need certain offices? And I have agreed with you that certain offices will go. You know, as part of uh, building uh, 
the 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 news the new the new reality. You know, certain officers will go. Certain actions I must do. You know, and and that's why I was saying here. Uh, I, I am I am interrogating what it is that I can do to make sure that we live within the reality that now we are in. I have, I have seen it, and <laughs> it is a societal problem. Believe you me, all these MPs, they are elected by us, the people of Kenya. And there is, you all admit, there is a lot of money spent in electing people. That's, that's the real challenge that we have. So people are not elected largely on account of what, what it is that uh, they, they, they will do. People are elected because they are well resourced, you know? And unfortunately, this is the product we end up with, you know? This, this is the product uh, we end up with. So this is something we must interrogate together. We must all agree because we, are, we get the leaders we elect, right? So these are the people. I did, I did, not, I did not elect all these uh, members of parliament or uh, the, the other people. Maybe the ones I have appointed, those ones I can take account, you know, and deal with. And, and we should. Because even in my own eyes, it is not right. People, you know, flaunting money, you know, people using the space in pulpits to, you know, prosecute politics. And, and, and all that is, is fine. And that is why I'm very happy with this moment, that we are all of us going to face up to this reality and call ourselves to order and do that which we must do. And uh, the conversation that was around here, I met the church, some of the church leaders, I met uh, even my own PG, and even them, they were saying, yes, let us abolish Harambe's. Yes, let's do something about uh, our situation. We must live within our means. So it is a very healthy conversation, and I am all in. Moses, <laughs> I am a Christian. I cannot stop going to church, you know? And uh, uh, I, I am very clear in my mind. And whenever I go to church, I, you cannot accuse me of doing politics in church. I, I rarely speak matters politics in church because my upbringing was such that church is a, is a different place. It's a place where uh, we worship God and we do the things that we do in church. Also, for going to church, I, I must tell you that I cannot stop going to church. 
I will, I will go to church. Maybe the thing we need to do uh, is, um, and whenever I go to church, like for example, today I was in, uh, uh, in Transmara, and I went to uh, a local church, and uh, the governor of that area came, and the former governor. Uh, the MP did not come, uh, I think they, because they didn't know, because I just decided to drive to church, you know, just like, like normal. It was not a fundraising, it was not you know, a big congregation, it was just a normal church uh, service. Many times, I go to church here at Melimani AIC, many times, and sometimes it's not even recorded. Many times I go to NPC Karen, and even many times there are no cameras. I go to uh, church every Sunday, and more than being recorded, I go to more Sundays that have no even record of uh, media than those who have a record of media. Of course, I also go to uh, Sunday services like the one I was in uh, Nyahuru when I'm invited, uh, say the inauguration of a bishop, it's a, it's a, it's a big event, when I'm invited, I, I, I go. And uh, it's not a fundraising, it's just a charge event. And um, as a Christian, you know, if you are invited, you, you, you attend. But I agree with you, there is uh, some conversation going forward, whether how we do it, so that it remains a religious issue and not, not politics. So, Mr. President, there, there are a couple of demands that you made uh, last week from the movement that has brought this conversation before. Yes. Um, there were 14 demands. Of those 14 demands, you at least address um, some, of the, some of them, including the CAS positions, the positions of the first and second lady. We've already talked about that. We've also talked about it and then there's a question around scrapping the, the, the housing levy. There also a demand, and the 14 demands there was also recording for MPs. There was a question mm. of JSS teachers. There was also a question of the intern doctors and the salaries of MPs, among others. Of these issues, what can you tell the young Kenyans tonight that of these issues, some of which ones do you feel can be solved before the, this conversation even goes further? The issue of JSS teachers have already been that it's impossible having reduced the amount Because, you know, <laughs> I, I, am, I, I don't need to be pushed about the JSS teachers. It was my initiative because these are very decent Kenyans who've really gone out of their way. For two years, they've been interns. They've been earning a very small stipend. It was their time now to be hired on permanent and pensionable. And I had made the budgetary provisions for it. I had made the budgetary provisions for the uh, intern doctors. I had uh, enhanced uh, the whole space around what they were going to do. Unfortunately, I, I have a new situation which I have to think about. With the money being scrapped from the Yes, with the money being scrapped from the... There be a possibility of those teachers still getting the opportunity to And now tell me, because, you know, if you give somebody a letter of uh, permanent and pensionable, you must have the money to pay them at the end of the month. The money to pay them at the end of the month has been scrapped. So it has to be, I have to begin to figure out, so what do I do with these uh, intern teachers? At the moment, I can't tell you straight that within a month or two months or three months, I will have figured out what to do with them. But they are part of my headache now going forward. What do I do with them? Now, the question of IDC, it's a yeah. question. At the moment, the country has no IDC. Members are calling for the recall of members of parliament. On the status of IBC, I think I, I received the final report uh, from Parliament uh, two days ago, and uh, within uh, the next ten days, I will make a decision, and we will proceed and appoint a new IBC.
Mm, luckily, you know, we still have other programs that will run. The housing program will run, and uh, he mentioned to me that uh, there are those who are saying we scrap the housing levy. You know, scrapping the housing levy means we get 160,000 young people out of work. It also means we get those who are working in cement factories, in steel factories, in quarries that supply stones, in many other areas out of work. I don't think we want to do that. You know, I don't think it is responsible for us to do that. I mean, they deserve, you know, an income the same way. We, we would actually be doing the wrong thing. We would actually be going backwards. I think we should, instead of saying, how do we scrap the housing levy? We should be saying, how do we do more with what, we, what, what the housing levy is doing? How do we expand it to reach out to 300,000, 400,000, 500,000? Because that's my plan. My plan ultimately is that this housing program should be able to hire 500,000 young Kenyans every time. And, and this is, and I'm talking about Kenyans are different categories. Engineers, architects, plumbers, you know, the people who go to our Tibet institutions, all the way to accountants in cement factories, the hardware people, and, and it's a whole industry. The people who manufacture doors, the people who manufacture uh, windows, the people, it's, it's a whole ecosystem that I hope uh, young people appreciate that this plan this housing program is actually achieving a lot. And, I'm, and, and this is not an invention of Kenya. This is how modern countries have achieved unemployment. This is how modern countries have taken their development to the next level. I had uh, an engagement here with the president of Singapore. Singapore was at the same level as Kenya at independence. Today, they are in the first world, we are struggling. Because they made those decisions early. Today, 90%, 96% of Singaporeans are home owners. Today, we have 7 million Kenyans living in slums. And many who do not have decent uh, livelihoods. Because we, we didn't make the decisions they made. These are some of the very difficult decisions I've had to make. Many people are beating me that about the housing levy, but it is what Singapore did to be able to get where they are. We keep talking, oh, you know, we were together with Singapore, they've gone ahead, they have, every, they have homeowners, <laughs> but we don't want to do what Singapore did to get where we want to go. We should be like Singapore. How are you going to be Singapore if you cannot make decisions that took them to where they are. You do not want to make those decisions. We just, we, just, we just have to make the right decisions and take the country forward. And I am very proud of the decisions I have made so far. Difficult, not very popular, but I'm telling you, that's how this country is going to change. Absolutely.
Very good question. I have told you we have four programs. One of them is housing. The other one is a digital job space. The digital job space is wide. You have accountants there. You have uh, creatives in that space. You have many other people working in that space. I will give you an example. In Ruiru, you heard me talk about Ruiru. I was there two months ago with a company called CCI from America. They are looking for people to work in the digital space. They've hired 5,000 young Kenyans of different skills, with different skills, not necessarily technical. Sometimes it's just people who are out of school with a simple uh, certificate or sometimes with a, with a diploma, with speaking good English. And they are now working for different companies in the U.S. from Ruiru. It is the reason why, if you read our manifesto, we have what we are calling the digital superhighway. It is the reason why I was saying we have changed the CDF Act so that we establish ICT hubs in every ward in Kenya so that we take it down to the bottom, as was my commitment. Take it down to the bottom. So that at every ward, a young person can walk from home to an ICT hub with internet, with electricity, with connectivity, with a person to teach them simple digital skills, and with an elaborate program on digital jobs, where they can uh, do tasks, different tasks, in, 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 the, in the digital space. And already, if you go to many of our Tibets, we already have installed ICT hubs, in fact, in Kilgoris today, I promised them that we are going to, there is a small, uh, there is a small uh, technical training uh, facility in uh, Lolgorian. I promised them that we will give them 100 computers so that we begin to try to, to begin to train the young people of that, of, that, uh, of that locality. So that we bring more young people with different skills onto that space, whether it is advertising, whether it is uh, all the other uh, jobs that, are, that people can do online, yeah? My commitment is that we will not only have internet connectivity, we will also have training facility, and we will also make sure that you have requisite uh, technology devices to make sure that these young people can monetize their talent after a while, they can buy their own computer and begin to do it from home. So that is the other program that we have. And on that program, if you visit some of the Tibets today that are operating in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in our technical training colleges, if you visit some of the Tibets like the one I've told you, some of the uh, ICT hubs like the one I was telling you in Ruiru, and in fact, CCI, just so that I don't forget, CCI have agreed with us that they will expand the uh, uh, 5,000 jobs to 100,000 jobs in one year if we do certain incentives for them. And I have already asked our KRA to look at some of the incentives so that we can give them the opportunity to expand that uh, scope to 100,000 jobs. And that's just one company. If we get 20 companies to do that, then we are moving to the next level. That is item number two. Program number three is export of labor, right? I have signed, we have 19 bilateral labor agreements with different countries globally. We are negotiating one with the US, we have completed one with Germany, we have completed with UAE, we have completed with uh, Saudi Arabia, we are working with 19 different countries including the US, Canada, and many other countries so that young people can now choose, you know, from a, a, a buffet of a, whether either, either you are a nurse, you are a mechanic, you are an engineer, you are whatever, whatever trade, you can go and work in those countries. And I was giving an example of what is happening in my village, where I come from. 
There is a young man there who was interviewed last week. And he was saying, you know, the president has not done well because many of the young people in this village are going abroad because they cannot find jobs locally. Not knowing that that going abroad was part of my plan because I believe we should be able to export between 10 and 20,000 young Kenyans every month to go abroad, work abroad, send their money back at home, and begin the process of making sure that we grow our economy using remittances from uh, these young people. Program number four is what you heard me say about local manufacturing. My friend, there is absolutely no reason why we should be importing products that we can manufacture locally. Because by manufacturing locally, we use our own raw materials. If it is sanitary parts, for example, we use our own cotton that is grown in Pusia, that is grown in the Rift Valley, that is grown in uh, uh, Makueni. We use that locally. We give business to our farmers. Number two, our own young people work in the factories. I was talking to Mr. Sahil. Mr. Sahil has a factory in uh, Thika. He employs currently 200 young people. He was telling me, Mr. President, if you pass this law, the one in the finance bill, and put import duty on imported sanitary parts, I will hire another 300 young people. I talked to him myself. I will hire another 300 people. Because I will, the, the biz, I am operating now under capacity because we are getting competition from imported uh, products. So that whole manufacturing space, if we make sure that we have the right tax policies in place, we will expand job opportunities for young people in Kenya. Let me give you another example. Last year, we said, let's put a duty on imported cement, an imported furniture, an imported clinker last year. Do you know what happened? 95% of clinker, we reduced imports by 95%. What did we do? We opened a new factory in Kenya. We are in the process of opening another four factories for cement manufacturing in Kenya. Because we have put a duty on, on, uh, on imported clinker so that we can manufacture that clinker locally. We can manufacture that cement locally. If we manufacture cement locally, uh, uh, my good friend, you know, three things happen. Number one, we use our own local materials. We pay for those local materials. Ordinary people get paid. Number two, we hire our own young people. They are the people who will work in those uh, cement factories. They are the people who will be transporters from those uh, cement factories. And number three, we create local wealth. Our own companies locally begin to grow their balance sheet and become big companies. They can invest more. They can invest in other areas. But by importing, we are exporting our jobs. The people working in the factories will not be working in Kenya. They will be working in those countries. By importing, wealth will not be created in Kenya, it will be created in those countries. Number three, raw materials will not be the ones from Kenya, it will be raw materials from those countries. So this is, this is, and you know, these are actions that must be deliberate. And this is what I am doing. I have, uh, you have asked me a question. Apart from housing, what are the other areas you are working so that we don't, we don't concentrate just on housing? So, Digital jobs, export of labor, manufacturing. So, Mr. President, are you confirming here that um, the deal with Germany that was to be signed by the end of this month is signed and sealed? The deal, in fact, uh, they have asked me to, uh, we, have a, we have a big uh, occasion in September between Kenya and, uh, and Germany. They have asked that the president of Germany wants to sign it with me. When, I, when we do that occasion in September. But meanwhile, the, 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 doors, are the, door, the doors are open. All right, so quickly, um, there has been a report 
sense that um, there was a lapse of intelligence in terms of the, the protests that we've seen over the last few weeks. Um, can you clarify the situation for us? And is the intelligence service and the police uh, service reading from the same page? And there are calls for the head of um, NIS and Odin Hadi to resign. Are you on the same page? I don't think that is where we need to. This is not the time for blame game. I don't think that uh, we need to we need to blame each other. I think let us let us solve the problem. You know, we have a real problem. The real problem here is that we have a youth situation that needs our attention, and I am very alive to it. And that is why when I campaigned, I campaigned on a platform that we are going to create opportunities for these young people. And I am at it. I am working on it. I think it is, uh, it, is, it is an inflection point. You know, we have uh, a whole new approach to things. We have new media. We have the, you know, social media space that is increasingly becoming the media where Kenyans are communicating. And, and I think uh, we are all seized of uh, maybe uh, doing things uh, differently, you know, making sure that we open more avenues for citizens to be able to participate because uh, citizen participation is front and center of government business and therefore I think there will be a consideration and uh, we will be discussing with parliament on how uh, this generation of young Kenyans can bring their views on board you know in, in the media they, they, are, they, they, are, they, are, they are friendly with yeah, and in a manner that uh, we carry we carry everybody along, it is it is a positive suggestion. You know, um, in my mind, I have to choose between being a politician and being a leader. Being a leader means you make the right decisions. I want to make a difference in Kenya. You know, Jesus, the man that has maybe is five billion followers today in the world, including yours truly, did his work in three years. Everything he did in three years. So it is not the length of how much you serve. You know, many people tell me, Mr. President, you should be bothered about your re-election. Frankly, my re-election comes second. Doing the right thing for Kenya is my first priority. Are you not worried at all that the ongoing protests that cause me to decide might lead to you losing a second term? You see, if the price to pay for me pushing the right agenda for our country 
making sure that the country does not default, making sure that we create opportunities for young people to work, and making the right decisions. I'm ready to take the consequences. It is something to think about. It, exercise, it will exercise my mind. No, I'm just telling you, uh, I have heard you, you know, and it is something that I will think about uh, going into the future. That's a possibility. Miss Kitinji, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. It is, um, you know, as I said in my other interview, I am a believer in uh, rule of law and due process. And I would, I would not want to hurt anybody that is not guilty. But I will not hesitate to deal with people who have been proved to be corrupt. And I have done it before. You know, when there was sufficient evidence that uh, people in the management of cereals did the wrong thing, we didn't hesitate. When there was evidence that the people who ran KNTC had uh, uh, criminal track records, we fired them and we prosecuted them. When it, there was evidence that the uh, caps did not act in accordance with what was uh, legitimate, uh, we took action. So as and when I have concrete evidence, I have uh, uh, concrete information of impropriety by any official. Precisely. That's why the CEO of Cereals, the General Manager of National Cereals and Produce Board, and seven other officers of National Cereals and Produce Board are in court. That is the kind of action I took. We didn't, uh, 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 you know, equivocate. We, we were very clear. You have an issue. And we are uh, in the process of uh, working on new management for National Cereals and Produce Board. The minister himself was taken to parliament and uh, taken through a uh, due process. Unfortunately, parliament did not make a determination. If parliament had made a determination, I would have fired the minister. In the previous interview, you've actually admitted that your cabinet has failed so far. And you have said your no, I have said they could do better. Yes, it, those in essence. Uh, but you've also said that you will be doing an introspection of yourself. What would this introspection entail? And what do you intend to do? Um, 
I don't think I should say more than I have said. Watch the space. So you're just telling us to, to stay awake. To... I will. I will. I will. I will. I will take action, and I, you will. You will see it. All right. Let's go back a little bit to, to the debt. Um, among the demands that were issued is an audit of the national debt, and you've spoken about that in the previous interview very well. I love that. I, I would like to go back to just one thing. Um, in essence, um, Kenyans have, have been worried about the, the amount of debt, and in essence, they have been asking: Is are your trips abroad? Keeping putting us in bed with the likes of IMF and the World Bank, and are you worried about these deals or the, the conditions pegged on these deals, yourself as the president, and more so, can Kenya pull out from these deals? You know, uh, the multilateral development banks are our biggest supporters. In fact, the World Bank and IMF and uh, all the other multilateral banks are our partners in development. They are actually the source of the largest development financing that we have. And their money is lent to us at between 0 and 2%. The alternative we have is to go to the market here which we are borrowing money at 14, 15%. If you are sitting where I'm sitting, you have two options. To go to the local market and borrow at 15%, or to speak to the World Bank and IMF and get money at 2%. It sounds reasonable, but the question has to be, You see, the ultimate decision doesn't rest with the IMF. They make suggestions to us, but I take the, the, the last decision. It is me. It is Kenya. It is us as Kenyans that decide. If we agree with a certain situation, we move on. If we don't agree with a certain situation, we tell them as much. My message, <laughs> my message to the young people of Kenya is two. Number one, I have a very clear plan to address youth issues, including unemployment. That's number one. And I have a clear plan, and I am ready to explain to them what I am doing, where I am, what I have achieved, and what I intend to achieve. That's number one. I have also had them on cutting down austerity measures that would trim the government expenditure, which is also a very positive thing. Cutting down on offices that may not necessarily be uh, too important, reducing on hiring staff that uh, are not uh, are not, are, not, are not necessary, cutting down on uh, advisors that may not necessarily be uh, uh, adding uh, value to this, cutting down on foreign travel and uh, expenditure on seminars and what and what and what, cutting down on uh, travel expenditure by all arms of government, reducing on uh, waste dealing with corruption, I have heard them very clearly. And I will address myself to those issues. And I have said I want to have a session with them whenever you guys are available, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, in a platform where you want me to be, I will be there so that we agree on the other issues. Correct. And uh, uh, with the current suggestions and reports, uh, we see that the uh, the executive or the legislative What you want to say about this? The very last is uh, program, 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 program
Let me start with your last question. Every mama mboga and every border border today borrows money on hustler fund, which I made a commitment. I have two million of them on that platform. That's number one. Number two, every mama mboga and every border border today have an opportunity to own a home because I have created a model that gives them an opportunity with 3,000 shillings a month to be a homeowner. It never existed. It was never there. If you go to Mukuru tomorrow, you will be shown a house where an ordinary Kenyan will pay 3,000 shillings and own a home on 10th floor or 6th floor or fourth floor. Number three, Mama Mboka today will also tell you, I am building 400 markets across Kenya. They are under construction as I talk to you. In fact, before the end of this year, between 100 and 150 will be ready because I made a commitment to them that Mama Mboka is doing business like everybody. And I committed to them that they will be doing their business in a place that is decent, that has water, that has electricity, that has you know, sanitation, that has toilets. Number four, I will also uh, tell you that in my universal health coverage plan, which unfortunately Kidogo has been affected with a finance bill, I have changed the law to make it possible for Mama Mboga or Boda Boda to go to hospital with a health insurance paid for by the government of Kenya if they cannot afford. And those who have been paying 500 to be reduced to pay 300 for them too to be able to access health care. That is my plan. So I have not dropped the ball. I am very clear on how uh, they, are, uh, they, are, they, they should be, they should be catered for in my administration. Let me come back to um, your uh, respect for institutions. The Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya will tell you, I have never called her to ask her for any favors on matters to do with the judiciary. I have been very unhappy with some of their rulings. But that is the nature of democracy. On matters to do with parliament, I have never instructed parliament to do anything. But there is a nexus between government policy and legislation. Those members of parliament who belong to the ruling coalition have a duty because we made the promises together. We went together to the people. We were standing by side, side by side. We were promising housing together. We were promising universal health uh, coverage together. We were promising fertilizer together. We were promising uh, coffee uh, issues together. We were promising uh, sugarcane issue together. So that is why we hold a PG to agree. You know, gentlemen, this is our manifesto. This is what we agreed. You know, that, that, is, that is, and it happens worldwide. It is not a Kenyan invention. It happens in the US, it happens in the UK. In fact, in other countries, it is much more serious than here. In other countries, you cannot vote against your party. Here, we have members who vote against the party and no action is taken against them. So, so that's how democracies work because uh, that's, that's how uh, it, is, it, is, it is meant uh, to work. But, but the same way, members of my own party sometimes don't vote with me. So sometimes members of the other party 
also don't vote with their leadership. They vote across parties. So that is something that happens sometimes. But it is not the norm. It is the, uh, uh, um, uh, what, what happens not regularly. But the norm is that people vote with their parties. Yes, Moses. two things. Let me answer to my commitment. And I am very faithful to my commitment to make sure that my deputy is treated as it deserves the office of the deputy president. I have done three things that I never enjoyed as deputy president. Number one, I, didn't, I never had a budget for my office. Even for buying tea, it was controlled from the office of the president here in State House. Today, my deputy has an independent budget for his office with an independent accounting officer that doesn't report to this office. That's number one. Number two, I never chaired a single, in fact, there was no cabinet committee for 10 years. My first action when I came into office is to set up cabinet committees and appointed the deputy president to chair those cabinet committees. Eight cabinet committees chaired by the deputy president. There is no government business that is prosecuted by the cabinet that does not first start at the cabinet committee chaired by the deputy president. It was my commitment because I wanted my deputy to have, a, to have clear roles, clear responsibilities and to participate fully in government management, government programs. Number three, I made sure that my deputy, whenever he needs uh, transport and transport is available, he is facilitated. In fact, what I have done is that I have even repaired and made available two police choppers, the same size as mine, that I use from the military for my deputy to use. And in fact, some of the time, he uses the choppers that I use. Sometimes, because these uh, choppers are actually meant for military work, sometimes they're not available. Like yesterday, 
they were not available. I took a private uh, transport to where I was going. Today, I took private transport to come back. You know, sometimes there, there are those issues, instances. So, on that first issue, I am very clear in my mind that my deputy must be treated with respect. And I have done that faithfully. On, on the issue of uh, maybe the discord, that is an in-house matter. We will uh, sit down and, uh, and work it out. But, again, to your point, um, since uh, my deputy is not here, I don't think it is fair for us to uh, insinuate that they, he has a different view from mine. I think let's, let's leave it like that. We, those are internal uh, party issues. We will sort them out. First, hmm? so first, uh, let me say that um, uh, this is a, a phase in society. We are, we are, we are, we are coming to a new phase. And uh, it requires us to adjust. You know, maybe, uh, as you've said, many of the young people are not watching mainstream media. They don't read newspapers. Uh, maybe there they needs to be uh, asked to think about new engagement. How do we engage uh, these young people better in the spaces where they are, whether it is on Twitter or TikTok or or, or the other spaces. Number two, on matters of abductions. There is no provision in the law for any abduction. And any arrest of citizens must be within the law. And that is my clear position to the independent police service.
the, however, when police arrest somebody, it must also not be immediately made to look like it's an abduction. If the police show up and they show themselves, we are policemen, we are coming because either we asked you to come to the police station, you didn't come, or we have some questions for you to answer, that, that should be within the parameters of the law. There is a provision for the police to come and tell you, uh, Eric, we have come, this is uh, us, we are the police, we want to uh, interrogate you on this matter, on this matter, on this matter. So long as it is done within the parameters of the law, it doesn't amount to an abduction. Um, as for the protests, I have said clearly that peaceful protect protesters will be protected by the police. Eric, you will not tell me that the people who burned down parliament were peaceful protesters. They were not. You don't want to tell me that the people who burned the Chief Justice Office were peaceful protesters. As, as you heard me say, we have thousands of citizens who have lost property, businesses worth 2.4 billion. These are innocent people doing their business. Criminals take advantage of a peaceful demonstration, pretend they are part of the peaceful demonstration, and they go and loot and steal and burn people's property. Those ones too, uh, Eric, we must, the police must look, they have a cardinal responsibility to protect people's property. I think they do. That's what the law provides. Many of the peaceful demonstrators, we, we saw them in camera, many of them suffered in the hands of criminals who came, took away their phones, took away their, their uh, passes, did a lot of you know, damage to them. These are people who we, we must all agree that unless we are firm on criminals who either take advantage of uh, peaceful demonstrations to hurt the demonstrators, to steal from the demonstrators, or even go to steal from shops, destroy people's businesses, or even attack government buildings. Eh? Town, the city hall was burned down. The office of the chief justice was burned down. You saw what happened in parliament. Mayhem, it, 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 doors uh, broken, uh, furniture pro broken, kitchen burned, you know. I mean, surely, Eric, do, do you sincerely believe that that should be part of our demonstration? I don't think so. And that's all I'm saying. Let us, let us keep it peaceful. And I said it from day one. I love the way the youth were going about it, peaceful. They were on TikTok. They were, uh, you know, a homogeneous group of young Kenyans. And I like the fact that they came to say, okay, uh, we have an issue. And, and I wish I had the time to explain to them that some of the issues that they were saying were in the finance bill, they were not in the finance bill. Some of the issues that uh, they were complaining about, they were not in the finance bill. And uh, it, it is not enough for somebody to say, I don't care what is in the finance bill. I just don't want it. Do we really want to do that? I think we are a mature society enough and we are intelligent enough to say, okay, let us unpack this finance bill. What is good in it? What is bad? Because we lost a lot of good things in the process of trying to remove bad things that most, some of them were not even in the finance bill. So this is the really candid conversation I want to have with the young people, that if there is an issue, we are reasonable. Many of the young people have gone to school. Many of the young people are good uh, graduates. They, are, they, they have, uh, and, and it's not difficult for them to say, okay, 
Let's look at what is in the finance bill. Let's look at what is in this document. Can we remove this? Can we remove this? Can we change this? This is good. This is good. This is not good. And then let's have a package that uh, uh, serves our country, creates opportunities for us as a, as a country, and builds our nation because this is the only country we have. I think if we have free media, and it is not the one in Kenya, then I don't think we have any free media anywhere in the world. In Kenya, people report anything, everything, what is news, what is fake news, what is true, what is not true. I would really ask the media act responsibly. There is no media house that I have called. There is no media person that I have called to tell them anything. I, 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 we, we've, I would not have a conversation with any media. I know very well the necessity of free media. And I support media wholeheartedly. I mean, Media have also become victims of some of the criminals in our streets, you know. Uh, media have also maybe inadvertently sometimes got into situations where their cameras are broken, you know, in the confusion, in the, in the running around when, when, when there is, uh, you know, commotion. And, and it, is, it is unfortunate, yeah. And, and, and uh, um, um, to, to your point that uh, uh, anybody has threatened KTN, KTN should make a formal report of who threatened them and, and so that they can be dealt with in accordance with the law. Nobody should threaten any media personality for whatever reason, either on account of what they reported or on account of what they did and if I have a complaint with a media house or a media personality, I know where to take them in terms of report them to the right agencies and uh, have the matters sorted out within the parameters of the law. I think uh, that, that is, that's a case where the police journalists should look. If a particular policeman has harassed a journalist, Police have uh, numbers. Let us let us have them reported, so that they can be dealt with in accordance with the law, so that nobody escapes and uh, 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 um, uh, institutes impunity. Nobody is above the law. The president is not. The police are not. Citizens are not. Everybody must be subject to the law. Right. Um, before I ask you, um, just a quick question. Uh, our friend was covering um, the deployment in Haiti. She is in Haiti. Um, she had unverified claims that some of the police officers there have been shot. Could you confirm for us that um, whether any Kenyan officer in Haiti has uh, has been shot? Um, that that would be necessary. To there is no report no. of uh, that I have okay. of that nature. All right. Um, the other question is, what has kept you up at night over the last two weeks? Over the last two weeks, I have kept sometimes late into the night thinking about the young people of our nation. Because 
I am one person who did not get a job until I was elected as a member of parliament. And I know what it means not to have a job, not to have an income. And that is why I am willing to put my career on the line to see to it that to the extent that I can, young people have an income. That's the why, that's why I have really pushed the programs that I believe will put a job on the way of many young people, will put an income in the pockets of many young people and will make a livelihood for many young people. I have kids and I know what they feel when they don't have a job. They talk to me as a father. And, and so th that's one thing that keeps me awake. And unfortunately, in the current situation, we have a misunderstanding. We have a miscommunication. Partly, I am to blame. I should communicate better. You have told me that maybe my communication is not getting to the right people because maybe I'm communicating using the wrong media. Maybe to be able to reach these many young people, I should be able to get into the media where they, where they, where they are so that I can communicate better to them. Maybe that way, with understanding what we are doing, understanding the reasons why we are doing what we are doing, they would, instead of opposing what we're doing, they would add value to what we are doing, support what we are doing, and uh, benefit from what we are doing. All right. Um, as you're making your summary um, to the this can you just look straight into the camera. Um, Which camera? Uh, just any of those cameras there, uh, make your remarks to them. And, and as you're doing so, perhaps uh, it's something you should think about. I know you're a busy This man. place is cold. Yes, <laughs> I know. This place is very cold. As you're, as you're thinking about um, what to do next, perhaps um, a Twitter space a month might, might, might sound a lot, but if you do consider... A Twitter? A Twitter space a month yeah. uh, might, might sound like a lot, but once a month, perhaps you might be able to reach more. Once, once uh, maybe once in a month, once in two months, I, I don't mind. Yes. Yeah, so these uh, young people, the young people of our nation, my very good sons and daughters, let me uh, tell you that I value what you do. I have heard what you have said. I have seen what you have done. And you have made recommendations. Some I will outright implement on cutting down on government lodges and cutting down on uh, offices that uh, we can. I will deal with some of the issues that you have raised. You have given me some difficult choices. I will suggest to you how uh, we can together go about the difficult choices that you have put on the table on some of the issues. But I want to promise you that uh, in the engagement that we're going to have, God willing, in the next uh, couple of days, I think we've agreed with some of uh, uh, your colleagues here that maybe Thursday, Friday, I will uh, be thoroughly clear and I want you to be equally clear on what you think, the suggestions you have, on how to take our country forward. My request to you is that we have a country to keep. It's the only home we have. We must do whatever it is that we do within the parameters of the law, respecting one another, and talking to each other with respect so that we can move forward together as a country. I am looking forward to this engagement in the space that you will uh, recommend. I'm told X is the space that you want us to engage. And I have uh, committed that uh, I will find myself into that space. I will ask one of you guys uh, in 
that space to host us so that we can have uh, this conversation as I do what I must do to get the country moving forward.